Well, good morning, everybody. Good to be with you on this Friday morning, the end of the work week. You've got to be glad about that. Sister Carol, good morning. Good to see you. Brother Tim, good morning. And uh, looking forward to a wonderful weekend. I hope and pray that you are. Tracy, good morning. Looking forward to Sunday, be praying about Sunday as always. Remember that. Remember to be keeping your services in your prayer. Brother Michael Ross, good morning to you. Uh, you may have noticed I tagged some of you in on this and I uh, hope you don't mind. If you do, just let me know and I won't bother tagging you in on it anymore. Um, no, I tag you in on it and... Uh, reach a, a wider audience with the Word of God. We reach a wider audience with the Word, and that's a blessing. Alan, good evening. Good to see you. And uh, have, a, have a, a, a praise point to share in, in a minute. A praise point to share in a minute. And uh, very, uh, very exciting. And I tell you, you know, it, this... Nikki, good morning. Good to see you. Um... Yeah, we'll share it in a minute, but I tell you what, it uh, works right along with what we've been talking about, with what we've been talking about. Now, we're not in, we're not in uh, Hebrews 11. However, the Lord has not let me go on this subject of faith, all right? He's not let me move on from that. Um, so we're going to have, well, I don't know, we've got this morning on faith again. I want you to take your Bibles, turn to James chapter 2. If you would, please, if you're following along in the scriptures, if not, as always, just have a listen, write down the references if you have a mind to, and uh, go over them yourself and let the Spirit of God speak to you through that. But James chapter 2 this morning, I want to talk to you this morning on the thought, a resurrected faith, a resurrected faith or a revived faith, a revived faith. And, you know, one of the things that we... Uh, read in the scriptures is that God is very capable. Now, yesterday we looked at ability. Remember that? It all adds up to ability. God is very able to take something that is dead and resurrect it. We, we see that, all right? We saw that Abraham accounted that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead. You know, we, uh, we saw, uh, you know, uh, was it um, when Elijah or Elijah, when that man was lowered down onto his bones and that man came back to life. Uh, and then, of course, in the Gospels, we see the Lord Jesus. I think he raised three people from the dead. The Lord did. And then Peter raised someone from the dead. Now, it wasn't a common thing. It wasn't a common thing. But I tell you what that does. That demonstrates to us the amazing ability and power of God to take something that is dead and resurrect it, breathe life back into it. Now, we can make many applications in regards to that uh, as far as, you know, the Lord can resurrect anything that's dead, a marriage, a relationship, a church, whatever, all right? So the application is endless. God is the God of the resurrection, and we all just praise Him. But by the way, we're going to be dwelling on that in a few weeks' time, a few days' time to come. We think about Easter, we think about the death, burial, and the powerful resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So we're going to look at a resurrected faith this morning. Now, Ian and Glennis, good morning. Now, um, before, I, before I read and we get into it, you know, yesterday we looked at it all adds up to God's ability. <clears throat> and um, many of you know uh, our niece, Oh, Mika's on. Mika, can I share the testimony? You need to give me a thumbs up if I can share your testimony. All right, otherwise, otherwise I won't be able to share it if you don't give me the thumbs up, all right? And people want to know. They want to rejoice. They want to rejoice. All right, I can't see any thumbs up. I'm going to step out by faith and I'm going to share your testimony, all right, because people have been praying. So yesterday... And, all right, yesterday, our niece, Mika, you know that she'd been battling with cancer and it's been a titanic struggle. And, uh, of course, she had you know, done some medical things and, and a num number of different other things that, uh, that she'd gone through. And a lot of, uh, lot of prayer 
and fasting has gone into it. And she went and had some scans yesterday. Now, I believe her abdomen was totally inundated with cancer. I think there was cancer all through, all right, cancer all through. And she had scans done yesterday and there is no sign of cancer. <laughs> I tell you what, man, we had tears in our house and I'm sure there was tears with Mika and her family and all of that and the relief. I tell you, I almost broke out and spoke in tongues, people. I tell you, I almost broke out. <laughs> I tell you, you know, this is, a, this is a thing, folks. Listen to me. God, I tell you, God takes you right to the edge, doesn't he? He takes you right to the edge and you're looking over and people are praying and fasting and believing God and beseeching God and crying out to God and God does that. What a, hey, we ought to just praise him, man. We just have praise and thank him. And that's what faith does, brethren. Honestly, that's what faith does. Now, here's the, here's the thing. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure in Mika's life, she struggled with faith, all right? She probably had some doubts and she probably, and this is the benefit of interceding one for another. When, when, you're not, when you're not directly involved in the situation, you have more liberty, more power to, to intercede and pray and believe on the behalf of somebody else, all right? And uh, I tell you, yesterday in our house, now Tracy never does this, all right? Tracy never does this. I'm always the one. I'd been thinking about it, but I, I, was, I, was, I don't know why I was procrastinating, pro 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 procrastinating about it. But tra And Tracy, uh, I'd mentioned this the other day too about doing it. And then Tracy gets up yesterday morning. She said, I'm going to fast. I'm going to fast for, for, for Mika. And there was a number of other things that we were fasting for as well, but primarily it was for Mika. And I said, well, I'm, I'll join you in that fast. So, uh, you know, Tracy had far, and I met, like I said, there were many others, all right? This, this, this is a, a joint effort of the brethren coming together, praying and fasting and seeing God just to, hey, hey, he is God, brethren, and he is able, all right? He is able, Woo! glory to God. You know, I feel sorry, I feel sorry for Baptist folk who have just taken the whole healing thing right out. Now, you know, I've been accused of being a charismatic and all sorts, but I tell you, <laughs> I, I would rather believe the scriptures and encourage people in the scriptures with their faith and the ability of God and what God can do and get that in you and believe God for great things, brethren. God is able. Oh, God is able. Anyway, anyway, if your faith is not revived or resurrected after that, I don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, let's look at it this morning. All right, let's encourage ourselves again with the whole thought of faith. So God bless you, Mika. We thank the Lord for what he's done in your life and for, for Michael and for Jaden and for, for all the family. And uh, it's just such an amazing thing. We praise God for it and uh, we give him praise. We give him praise. All right, James chapter 2, verse number 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Well, we know the answer to that. Now, I want to just stop here. We've got to remember, because there's a lot of different understandings about James too. Was James preaching a work salvation? Was James preaching you've got to work to keep your salvation? He's already writing to brethren, all right? He's writing to believers. They're already saved, all right? And, what he's, and, and the answer to that, can faith save him? Yes, faith alone saves somebody, all right? Faith alone. But works is very important. Titus chapters uh, uh, two, 2 and 3 tells us that we ought to maintain good works, okay? And there's a reason for that. So he says, can faith save him? Yes, can faith save him? If a brother or sister uh, be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So that's a fair enough question. You can't see, you can't see faith. You can't say, Well, I have faith. Well, it's like, hey, what? Show me. What? You know. So anyway, verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father, and we looked at this yesterday, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered up Isaac, his son, upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. 
The scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified and that's where a lot of people get, get confused. But we'll have a little bit of a look at that this morning. And not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. All right. So we understand a couple of things. We understand that God does not want a dead faith. Okay. God does not want a dead faith. If your faith is dead, now a way that a faith is dead is that you're not doing. All right. You're not doing works. Works reveal your faith. Okay. Works give life to your faith. Folks, if, if, you have, if you've stopped, and I wrote this down, I was, I was meditating on this yesterday, I feel that the Lord gave me this yesterday. When you stop feeling the thrill of being challenged, your faith is dead. When you stop feeling the thrill of being challenged, that, that rush, you know, when you're challenged about doing something, God speaks to you and he tells you to step out. And it could be anything. Hey, you know... We talked about fasting just a minute ago. Do you know that fasting is a work also? So if you're praying and fasting about something or in particular for somebody you know, on behalf of someone, Tasha, good morning, then that means you're doing a work. You're, you're, you're backing up your faith by what you're doing because through your work of fasting and your faith in God, you're believing God to do something. And God sees the work. All right, God sees the work. Faith is of the heart. We know that salvation alone, sa uh, faith alone saves. We know that. For by grace are you saved through faith. You know, it's a gift of God. That's a given. We understand that. But sometimes this whole struggle about works, 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 and oh, if you believe in this, then you, you believe in a works-based salvation, or if you do this. Well, no, works is very important for the Christian life. All right, works is very important. Works is not to be saved. Works is not to keep being saved. But folks, let me just say this, and some of you may disagree with me, and I probably would have some brethren that disagree with me. Works is an evidence. Works is an evidence of salvation. It's a proof. When he says that Abraham was justified by what he did, and Rahab was justified by what she did, the works, the works were a proof of their faith. Because, you know... Rahab could have said, oh, you know, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'll go and protect these messengers and not do anything about it. Well, where's your faith? Ab Abraham, it was, in, it was uh, you know, given to God. It said about Abraham, uh, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. So if you believe God, you're going to follow the, that up with an action. Okay. So the works is a proof, an evidence of someone being born again. So it's very important that you don't just sit back in the Christian life and say, well, I've got faith. Well, great, show me. How do I know that you're a believer? How do I know? Hey, folks, let me tell you, if, you, if you're active in witnessing or you're active in ministering, uh, you know, we, we come across so many people that just tell, they say, well, yeah, I'm saved. Well, how do you know that? Share with me how you know that you're saved. Firstly, I want to know, is it scriptural? There's so many testimonies out there that just does not line up with the Bible. You know, saw a brilliant flash of white light and it was Jesus and I got saved. Well, that's not scriptural. Well, it is scriptural, but only the devil himself turns himself into an angel of light. You know what I mean? So many people deceive. So when you challenge people on their salvation, they get very, very uncomfortable about that. It's one thing to say that you're born again. But the works reveal, the works are evidenced of your salvation. That's like baptism. Baptism doesn't save you, but baptism is an evidence of what you've done spiritually. It's that outward sign. If it's that, it's, it's, you see someone's serious about their salvation when they follow Jesus in believer's baptism. All right. So let's give a couple of thoughts here about this whole thing. And the, th the, first, the first is a question. What is your faith profiting? Or who is your faith profiting now? Now have a look at it again in verse number 14. He asks that, What doth it profit my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? Well, yes. But then he gives, then he gives us um, an illustration here. If a brother or sister be naked of destitute and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Oh, depart in peace and be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? So 
what he's saying, your faith in Jesus Christ for salvation profits you. Now, he's not saying that faith doesn't profit you at all, because there are some things in life that I'm sure that you're believing God for and you're wanting God to do something. But predominantly, when you step out by faith to do something for brethren, that's who it's meant to profit. You see, there is a gift of the Spirit called the gift of faith. Now, some people in some certain circles of Christianity think that that gift of faith is so that they can get all manner of things for themselves and uh, heaped upon themselves all this material stuff. But the gift of faith is so that that person who's got that gift can believe on the behalf of other people. All right, that's what I was saying at the very beginning about Mickey. You know, when you're in the when you're in the very pressures and the turmoil. Uh, of going through something as, as major as a cancer or whatever it is, and the whole struggle and the family's up, the upheaval of the family. Of it. Outside, there ought to be brethren who are applying their faith through prayer and fasting and doing things and believing God so that it profits the other person. As a matter of fact, hold your place here in, in uh, James. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. Uh, again, if, you, if you're not following along in the scriptures this morning, that's fine. Write it down and I want you to go over this. This is what Jesus said and it's very, very important that we understand what the Lord is saying in regards to actions, to works, all right? Um, look at verse number 34. Then shall the king, notice it's, in, it's a capital K, we talk about Jesus here. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, from the foundation of the, of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? When saw we thee, sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me." So notice what Jesus was saying, which is very similar to what James was saying about seeing a brother or sister naked and destitute of daily food. And you say, oh, God bless you. God will, God will provide for you. No, well, what about if God is speaking to your heart? You remember the thrill of being challenged. God's, hey, step out by faith and give that brother or sister something and, and, and see God provide their need and then see God provide your need. Jesus was saying that when you do this, when you work in such a way where you're visiting the sick, those that are in prison, a drink of food and clothing and all these sorts of things, and you're, you're doing this off your own back. You're doing it, when you do it to the brethren, you're doing it as under the Lord, and Jesus is pleased with that. He's very pleased with that. So I sometimes ask a lot of questions. Now, I know I can't judge a person's heart, and neither can you. I know that, all right? However, there's signs... All right, that show if someone's born again or not. Now, your faith may need reviving, all right? Your faith may need reviving. Now, look at verse number 17. It's even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Now, the great thing about that, if it's dead, we know that God can resurrect it, all right? Because God is the God of the resurrection. So a second thought is this. Your faith is dead if you are not doing by faith, all right? This is very important that we get a hold of this, brethren, because all of us, preachers, preachers a lot as well. Because we're, you know, before we were preachers, we were, Christ, we're Christians, you know what I mean? And we don't do what we do because we're preachers or we shouldn't. We do it because we're, we're believers, we're Christians. You know, it's like I said to someone the other day, Brother Marsh and I don't go knocking on doors because we're pastors. We go and want to share the gospel because we're Christians. It's a work that we ought to be doing. It's a, and it's a work that everybody ought to be doing. But notice that your faith is dead. Your faith is dead if you're not doing by faith. So faith, uh, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. You've just got a dead faith. All right? Not saying that you're not saved. It, it means that you've got to resurrect that faith and only God can resurrect it so you can get back doing again. Your works by faith produce your rewards. Now, I want you to look at this. All right. Now, I know we talked about Abraham yesterday. 
Verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect. All right, there was, there was an evidence or a proof of his faith because he obeyed God and did what God told him to do. All right, so it was evidence, it was, it was proof. But he was rewarded for his faith, wasn't he? We saw that. He was rewarded for his faith. Now, I want you to go to, hold your place in James. I want you to go, I'm keeping an eye on the time. I want you to go to Revelation. Do you know, do you know that there's only one thing that will follow you to heaven? There's one thing that will follow you. Your wealth won't follow you. Your, your cars and your houses and whatever. None of those material things on earth will follow you. Only one thing that you do on this earth will follow you to heaven. And that's your works. All right, that's your works. I want you to have a look at Revelation 14. This is a great chapter. Take some time uh, one day to, to read through it. And look at verse 13. It says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. So we're talking about Christians now, right? From henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Their works follow them. So what follows you into heaven before the judgment seat? What follows you before the Lord into heaven is your works, what you do on this earth. And it's very important that we understand that. What, what, so let me ask you this question. All right, and I want you to think about this. What have you done for the Lord in recent days? Are you doing anything for the Lord? Doesn't have to be a lot, brethren. There are some of us myself and others who have the liberty and the, and the privilege of being able to do many things. A lot of you work a secular job and so on and so forth, and you're busy with that. And I know you're busy with family, but we should never be too busy doing works for the Lord. All right, doing our work. Because that's, your, that's where you're going to get rewarded. All right, you're rewarded by your works. What you do, we could go to 1 Corinthians 3, we talk about works being burned up, you know what I mean? If they're done in the flesh, done in the spirit, whatever it is. But you'll remember your works follow you and your faith will be rewarded. Your works by faith produce your rewards, all right? Now, let's go back to uh, James chapter 2. James chapter 2, look at verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So works give my faith life. All right, my spirit gives my body life, all right, and works gives my faith life. So this is the whole thing now, because James is writing to scattered brethren. They're out there. They're, they've been persecuted. They're, they're scattered, and he's writing to them about faith. A number of great things in this little book that James writes to people who are scattered. By the way, we're a picture of that. We're, we're scattered all over this world. Christians are scattered all over this world. We're pilgrims. We're just passing through. And we've got to understand that our works and our faith and everything, we've got to have it in God because God is able. All right, God is able. So what do we do? What do we do very quickly? What do we do if our faith is dead? Well, we pray and ask God to revive it, to resurrect it. We need that. Can I just share you a couple more scriptures before I finish? If you've got to go, God bless you. But I want you to go to the book of Philippians. All right, the book of Philippians. And, uh, you know, something that, that we've all got to understand, myself included or preachers included, is that I, I can't make you. I can't make you do anything for the Lord. I can encourage you. I can share scriptures. But at the end of the day, I've got to leave it with the Lord because, it, because it's the Lord who is going to do the work. All right. Now, I want you to look at Philippians chapter 2. Uh, where are you? Yeah, Philippians 2. I was in Philippians 1. I was thinking of another verse. Look at verse 12 and 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, we know, I hope you do, he's not talking about work out how you can be saved on your own. No, no, no. When we talk about salvation, we're talking about deliverance as well. We're talking about get the things of life, getting through life. He says, work it out. Work it out. You can work it out. I'm always going to break it as well. You can work it out. Anyway, and we shouldn't bring that up. I'm talking about the Bible. Look at verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. 
So folks, let me just say this. If you're struggling in your faith and you find that your faith is dead, you're not being excited and challenged and, and all of that, pray and ask God to resurrect it. And what God does is, is he works in you. It is the work of God in you that is going to help you do all right, his work. Now, a couple of things about that. We've got to stop resisting his work and start accepting his work in us. All right, it's a work of God in you. We've got to relinquish control. A lot of us are control freaks. I want to control. I want to control. I'm in control. No, no, no. God ought to be in control. Stop resisting and relinquish your control. Say, Lord, again, I'm, I'm giving you my life is yours. Rededicate, resurrender, whatever you want to call it. Say, Lord, I've, I've just been feeling that my faith has been struggling. I've not been. Uh, working for you, not been doing what I ought to be doing, so on, so forth. And, and I, just, I just relinquish my control. And I'm asking, Lord, I'm asking because it is God working in us. Now, God's working in us to be willing to do. That's where it comes from. I can't, like I said, I can't force you. I can't, listen, and <laughs> I can't guilt you. <coughs> Neither should I. All right. We ought to be praying. I ought to be preaching, but at the end of the day, it's the Spirit of God that's in you that is working in you to be willing to do His good pleasure. All right, one last scripture. Let's go to Hebrews, Hebrews 13. All right, Hebrews 13. I want to share this verse and then we'll be done. Hebrews 13, verse 20, 21. Now the God of peace that brought you again from the, from the dead, our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Did you see that in verse 21? All right. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing. So it is the Lord working in you and through you to get you to be willing to do his works which are well-pleasing in his sight. Why? i tell you one reason why, because he wants you to have a living faith. He wants you to have a powerful faith. He wants you to have a profiting and a producing faith. And he wants you to receive rewards the day that you and I stand before him because it's your works that are rewarded. All right. So a resurrected faith. Are you struggling? You're having a hard time? Well, ask God to continue to do a work in you to be willing to do his good pleasure. Wow. Praise the Lord. Hey, we rejoice again. Colin Pauline Smith. Good morning. We rejoice again, Mika, at the news of what God did. We praise him. We're thankful for him. We're rejoicing with you all. What an amazing God he is. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just want to thank you so much that you are a God who responds to faith. God, you are not dead. You are alive and well. You are powerful. You are mighty. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for what you're able to do. And God, we just rejoice at the healing of Mika. We rejoice with her family. Uh, Lord, we rejoice in you because it was a work of you. Now, we thank you for doctors. We're not saying that we don't believe in doctors. We're not saying any of that. But I do believe whether you use doctors or whether you use natural medicines or whether it's whatever, it is all from you. And we want to recognize that, God, because you're able. I pray that our faith would be strengthened. I pray that if our faith is staggering or stagnant, I pray that if our faith is even dead and lifeless, that you would resurrect that especially in these days and days to come where we need to be keeping our eyes on you and believing you for great things. Lead us and guide us today, we pray. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining me all week. Some of you, I won't see you tomorrow. I'll be on tomorrow, but some of you, you know, with Saturdays and stuff like that. Um, now, here's the thing. I'm preaching away on Sunday, so there's no live streaming messages from Heritage this Sunday. I'll be away um, preaching away, so praise the Lord, pray for me, I value your prayers. So uh, no, no live streaming messages from Heritage on Sunday, and then Sunday afternoon we're going to go down and visit Lifegate Baptist Church, Tracy and I and the Marshes. So looking forward to that. Hey, remember what Jesus said, you shall know the truth and truth shall make you free? Absolutely. Have a great day, and until tomorrow morning, God bless you, and I'll see you then. Bye for now.